Hey everybody, I'm Mr. Riedel and I'm really looking forward to taking you on a classroom tour. I teach fifth grade here in Portland, Oregon, and I'm actually giving you a tour, not at the beginning of the year, but at the end of the year. It's actually the middle of May right now, and what I wanted to do is I wanted to take a tour at the end of the year because I wanted to show the classroom uh, as it is when, while the kids have been in it for many months. I'm actually very thankful that it is um, not in chaos because I have flexible seating and I am pleasantly surprised with how well it's going. Um, and I'm really thankful too because I love teaching and having the kids work in groups and I love being able to allow them to have choices and opportunities to choose where they, seat, where they sit in the classroom. Um, so first things first with the flexible classroom the way that it works in my classroom is that I give them a uh, choice every week to sit where they want. So they get to pick their spot. They have little name tags. Um, I made little Pez uh, fonts for their names. And they get pencils and um, they take these and move them around to where they want to sit each Friday. So we have a classroom meeting at the end of each Friday. and. The way it works is what we do is I move this desk, move this out of the way, move that table out of the way, and right here, this whole area here becomes our classroom meeting. So our classroom meeting, we uh, talk about the week uh, every Friday. We share positive things that we see in one another. Um, we can ask questions, offer suggestions. So after the classroom meeting, they get to pick, choose their spot. They put their name tag down, and that is where they get to sit all week. So some of the choices I have is I actually got this, it's an old typewriting desk um, and students, it's on wheels and the students like to sit here if they just want to uh, sit on their own for the week. Um, I actually repurposed this, this used to be my cart for my document camera. Um, this is also on wheels but the students can stand here and use this as a desk if they want uh, or a single desk back here. But for the tables I have uh, four yoga balls and I used to have the yoga balls all at one table, but that was just too much. I wanted to spread it out a little bit. So we have the long table here. This is another standing table. Um, the, a lot of the kids really like the standing table because they get to move around and be a little bit more free. Um, and the round table with the office chairs. They really like those. Those are cozy chairs. And then the low table. Some students really like being down low to the ground. So I got these wobble cushions that they can use if they want to sit on something, or they can just kneel or sit on the floor. Uh, I got these wobble stools, which really help with uh, keeping their bodies moving as they are sitting and trying to focus. So this table is a little like medium height for the size of the stools. And there are some chairs that uh, are just normal classroom chairs that some students prefer just because it's a little bit more solid. So sometimes with the flexible seating, sometimes I prefer that they sit in their assigned seat. So I have this on the board and I either put it on assigned or they can sit anywhere they want. So that changes throughout the day and then they know where they're expected to sit at a certain time. Um, and that's pretty much it. They love having the choice, the opportunity. Uh, if it is a problem for them, then I just um, say either go back to your assigned spot or I, I take away the privilege. Uh, if they are having a hard time with the cozy chairs, then I remove that and they have to sit or stand. Or sometimes if they're having problems, all right, Johnny, pick a different spot. And then they go to a different location because they realize that they were not making good choices. So, um, so that's the deal with flexible seating. I love it. I hope I never have to go back to traditional rows and desks. The other main reason, other than student choice, that I wanted to switch to um, tables instead of desks is that uh, I have had a really big problem with my students just stuffing and cramming all of their papers and books into their desk and it was just so messy and so chaotic looking and crazy that it uh, drove me nuts so what I ended up doing is I ended up switching to these notebook boxes that I got and you can tell that it's the end of the year because some students are um, some students have uh, taped it and uh, fixed it up, but um, most, of the, most of them are doing okay. So they keep their notebooks and some of their workbooks in here, and then they keep their binders in between, and they keep their textbooks up here. 
we need to work on practicing lining them up nicely. And, um, and that's pretty much it. Like we have certain textbooks in certain locations and they're numbered so the students have those for the numbers. Um, but each student has their own notebook box. That's just half the class. The other half of the class is over here. Um, and as you can see, it's, it, this is much more tidy than uh, the students cramming everything in their desk. So that's something that I really appreciated. All right, so that's pretty much it for organization with students and with their work. Um, the, rest of the, the rest of the tour I want to show you is just all the way around the classroom. I'll give you a 360 view and give you a few specifics on each thing. And hopefully some of this will give you some ideas for how you might want to design your classroom. So let's start back over here. I actually have um, this, my hammer out, because I was actually hammering some of my Pez dispensers. Actually, maybe we should start with my Pez dispensers. As you can see, I have my lanyard, which is a Pez lanyard, um, because I collect Pez dispensers. And um, I decided that it'd be fun to just put them up on the wall and ceiling. And so I've been collecting since I was in middle school. And um, I didn't know that I would be a teacher back then, but it actually ended up turning out to be a really fun way to display because all my students really love looking at all the characters uh, and all these up here I've gotten as gifts this year um, from the students who want to add to my collection and I actually have over 800 uh, right now and I've been starting to put up some more on this wall I cleared off some posters because I wanted to put up a bunch more here because um, I have many left so that's why I've been um, that's why I have my hammer out um, so anyway uh, the students do not keep their own school supplies. I actually have community school supplies. So what I do is I have these wicker baskets and the students can just pull out the jar and then take them to their table and then set it down in the middle of the table and they can all share. Uh, so we have a lot of talks about uh, community resources and sharing with each other. Um, same with markers and using those as well. Um, I have uh, adult coloring sheets that here that uh, the students can use to color during like read alouds and stuff like that. So they can choose what they want. Uh, this is my writer's workshop wall. Writer's workshop is, uh, I pick a new assignment each month for what the students are to do with their writing. And this month, it just happened, to, well last month, April, just happened to be free choice. So this is the free choice wall. And um, so they get to use this to display what they've worked hard on and the other students can pull it out and read if, if they want to read their friends work. I have a Chromebook, classroom Chromebook that I uh, that the students can use and a classroom tablet as well. Uh, over here is my classroom calendar. So my classroom calendar I have uh, further in advance all the stuff that's due in the future. Uh, this is really helpful for students who I uh, like to look at stuff long term and then they get ready ahead of time. Uh, learning objectives I change every week and so I have different subjects and the learning objectives go there uh, so that they're displayed for everybody. I have a poster here for um, uh, hand signals like when I'm teaching during class they put up a one if they need a new get a new pencil they put up three if they want to get new materials um, and stuff like that so it helps if I know exactly what they are needing. Uh, this, this is the writing process that goes along with my writer's workshop wall and what they do is they take their name and they move it onto um, the different sheet depending on what stage they're at in their writing process. So um, they're all over here just because we started a new, uh, new month for a new writer's workshop topic and that really works really well for me to gauge an idea on where they're at in their process. I have timeless tips on the wall here. I got some of these straight from Mr. Clark's book. If you've read that, it's a great read. Um, I didn't incorporate all of his, but I did take some of them and I called them timeless tips for my classroom. And then and they're different from rules. Ron Clark talked about rules, um, but my rules are just uh, three. Be respectful, be responsible, and then this is my favorite one, especially for fifth grade. There's a time and place for having fun and goofing around. There's also a time and place for working hard and focusing. Know the difference and act accordingly. I know that that is really hard for fifth graders to work on. 
uh, focusing at the appropriate time, especially for me too, because I like to be goofy and I like to have fun when I'm teaching. But when it's time to be serious, then they need to know the difference and act that way. Um, I have a classroom ficus tree that one of my classroom jobs is to water it. Um, I have my classroom library here. In my classroom library, I am so excited about it because I just found this new website. Uh, let me show you. It's called Library Thing, and you can actually put all of your classroom books into this online library, and it you can actually have the students check it out online, and you can keep track of who checked out what, which of your books in your classroom library. So that is something I just did, and I'm really excited about. So. Um, so this is my classroom library, all organized by genre. And I've got three, four lamps. Yeah, f I have four lamps. I have uh, this standing lamp. I have another standing lamp over here that kind of adds some light to my Pez collection. I have this little lamp over here that's illuminating the globe. And I have this little lamp, which is the touch lamp. Um, that I just touch and then it turns on. And one of my most favorite things in my room is this, is the remote control. Because it drives me crazy to walk over there and turn that lamp, that lamp on, and walk over there and walk over there and walk over here. It just drives me crazy when I, like, I'm all packed up and I'm ready to go for the day, and then I realize, oh no, the lamps, I left the lamps on. So what I did is I put this remote control here for the lamps, and I can actually turn that one off. off. And then this one goes off, so I don't have to walk all the way over there and walk all um, for the lights. All right, what else? Over here, this is kind of like the main supply area. I've got extra staplers here in this basket. I've got extra scissors, well, a whole class set of scissors for the students to use. Uh, Post-it notes I need to refill. Uh, i got rulers, some classroom forms for classroom jobs, and uh, extra forms for, like, editor sheets for the students to do. Um, I have a classroom set of pencils that they use, so when they need to be sharpened, they go in here, and then they can grab a newly sharpened one from there. Uh, I usually don't let the students sharpen during the day. I usually do it like during transition times. Missing work basket, missing work slips for why it's late, or why it was missing. Uh, here's all the supplies, red pens, highlighters, and uh, all these other items that are important to use, uh, all classroom uh, shared. These are my student data binders that they put their names on and um, decorate uh, for what they use throughout the year, and also for getting ready to lead their parents when they do student-led conferences. Um, my whiteboards, my Sharpies. Here's my paper tower, all the paper that you could need is located right here and um, this is very convenient. Uh, this is my little grading corner uh, with extra worksheets and stuff for the students um, when they need it. Um, I have my tripod for filming videos and stuff like that. I keep that back here. All my past classes, student gifts and stuff that they want to give me. Here's my little shelf for stuff that is going to be handed out to the students in the upcoming weeks and stuff like that. Uh, teacher books, stereo system, stereo, which is hooked up to my computer. And I love my setup here because it works really well with my style of teaching. I have an additional monitor here, uh, which I use this display to put on the screen. So everything that is on this screen when it's hooked up to the projector is dis it is displayed on the screen. So that means that I could be working on other stuff here while the students have something on the screen or while the students are watching something. So I can multitask. Um, and then the way that that works is I actually have these cords back here. Uh, this goes to the projector, this is the Chromecast, and this goes to my computer. And it's just a splitter so I can change the input for whichever is coming through at that particular moment. And then I also have a document camera here, and this is my little place for where I sit if I am doing the doc using the document cam camera to teach. Um, and everything that I need here for that. These are just quick answer keys and stuff that I use for that.
I don't really know what else to say here other than this is just where I try to stay organized and I used to have like two bookshelves and a file cabinet and I used to have a whole bunch of junk filed away because I thought that I would need it in the future but my wife has actually been teaching me over the years that I am a pack rat and I need to cut back and um, so I've been really trying really hard to go paper uh, mostly go paperless and um, just keep only things that I need and that I actually use so I try to keep all my subject matter in these binders down here for each subject and any rewards down here I don't want to go out of get out of hand with it um, any important documents and stuff go here but other than that it's just the bare essentials and I try to keep it to a minimum I am a huge Cleveland Indians fan by the way as you can see my students when the Indians got to the World Series this past October my students were really excited for me but we lost in game seven but that's okay uh, Cubs have waited a long time too but I am really excited about this year. It's going well so far. All right, um, classroom jobs. I have different teams for classroom jobs. Um, and these different teams work together uh, to get jobs done in the classroom. So that's really, really helpful to help me not do as much on my own. Uh, the whiteboard voice level monitor. I have um, an indicator here that tells me where they are allowed to be for talking volume. Uh, at the end of every day I have a tweet. Uh, they tweet in their uh, notebooks each day. I give them a hashtag and they have to, T-I-L means today I learned. Sometimes I give them hashtags uh, when it goes with subject matter that we learned that day or uh, if we went on a field trip, hashtag field trip, whatever, and they tell, us, tell me something that they learned or something that happened. Um, and sometimes we do fun ones, sometimes we do more educational ones, but usually that's a great way to end the day um, because it, 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 it's involving writing and um, it's a fun way to get them excited about what they're writing. My closing routine, uh, just a routine for what they're expected to do at the end of the day. What else is important here? I have my flags up here, the pledges, Pledge of Allegiance, Pledge of the Christian flag, and Pledge to the Bible. Um, it's really awesome to be at a Christian school because I get to share my faith with my students. And so I have my uh, organizer here. These are magnetic. Um, I just put them on, I laminated them and put, them on, uh, put magnets on the back so that I could just move them around. This whiteboard happens to be magnetic. So I could just move these around as I need to. Um, globe, um, electronic, one of my students got me that as a gift. I collected this when I was in college, all the state quarters, and then I just put it in a frame. Uh, time timer, if you guys have, if you guys don't have one of these in your class, then this is so awesome. It is a visual timer for them to see uh, in visual form how much time is left based on how much red is left. Uh, so as the time decreases, they see that it goes away slowly and then it lets them know that time is up. My whole classroom reward system, I use these giant Pez dispensers, which actually hold whole packs of Pez dispensers. So all of these have come out of the giant Pez dispensers, and once all of these are empty, then the class gets a reward, and we have a class party. So that's a fun way to incorporate my Pez with uh, student rewards. This is my assignment wall and a messy shelf of uh, jackets. <laughs> But uh, this is where I put the missing work list if any students are late getting turning stuff in. Some posters here. Uh, MAP is what we use for our standardized testing. Uh, so the poster talking about that. More PEZ up here. I actually have a green screen. This is just a long roll of uh, green fabric that I use for some of my student videos when I want to do green screen. I just hook that up on the ceiling and then drape it down and uh, it, there's an area over there where I can film them. This is my student showcase wall. Each student has a different spot and they get to put up whatever they want that we did in class. Any work that we did in class that they want to sh uh, display and show. Something that they're proud of. It could be anything. Uh, most, of them don't, most of them put up artwork 
because it's colorful, but they could put up math tests if they're proud of that. They could put up any assignment that they did well on. Here's my classroom fish. This is Senor Pez Jr. Senor uh, means Mr. Pez means fish in Spanish. So how convenient is it that I collect Pez and it, and Pez means fish in Spanish. Pescado is actually the Spanish word for fish that you eat. And Pez is the Spanish word for fish that you don't eat. And we don't want to eat this cute little guy. <laughs> uh, delivery team. This is where students put stuff that needs to be delivered back to the, the delivery team. Is one of the classroom jobs where they deliver notebook monitor. They hand out stickers to people who finish their work. No name basket. The supply team left a note. Be clean with the headphones. Thank you, supply team. Very important. So uh, if they have headphones that they want to use, we actually, have a, we actually have a mobile lab that we share with the other fifth grade class and the other sixth grade classes. So between four classrooms, we share one mobile lab. And we just roll it on in here, and then it, it sits here uh, when we want to use the laptops. And then if they need their headphones, they can use these. Uh, this is student work that is filed here, and then I have a parent volunteer who comes in and files any graded work into these, and then every Friday it gets handed back to the students. Oh, this is another one of my favorite things in my classroom. So uh, this is something I developed with one of my former parent volunteers slash former teacher aide. Uh, in my classroom and this is the bathroom break indicator and what happens is if a student needs to go to the bathroom they can only go one at a time and then they mark what time they need to go and then what they do is they flip this down and it shows that there's someone occupied that this is occupied it shows that there's someone in the bathroom currently so I know that if somebody else asks to go to the bathroom then I know oh nope there's already somebody on the toilet right now and then when they come back in then they flip this back up and then I know that the toilet is empty. So that's a lot of fun that the students really <laughs> get a kick out of. Uh, is somebody in the bathroom? Uh, nope, nobody's on the toilet right now. <laughs> uh, I put up my diplomas for where I graduated. Posters, Bible verse poster, universe poster, the rules of the school, mission statement, readle rules. And these are my student mailboxes. They are supposed to empty these out every day, uh, but it doesn't always happen. But this is a good routine for what they are supposed to do at the end of the day is empty out their mailbox if they need to take anything home. Ah, this is my social media board here. You can follow us at Twitter or Instagram, at uh, Mr. Riedel 5th. So what I do is I have two classroom team jobs. Uh, one is the tweet team and the other is the photography team. So the photography team gets to post uh, pictures that they take in the classroom on Instagram and the tweet team gets to post tweets uh, from the end of the day. At the end of the day we share our tweets and uh, the ones that I select they get to type on uh, our Twitter page. A student goes to our classroom Twitter page and then they type a new tweet for whoever I select. So. Every now and again I have them print out the tweets and the pictures that they want to post on the on the board just so that it is a fun way of displaying all the pictures and tweets that we did throughout the week. This is the bookshelfy carousel and this is something I just picked up this thing from the library because they didn't need it anymore. So I asked them if I could take it so I took it and I repurposed it. I have these little compartments here and these compartments they can come out and you can put pictures on so what I have students do on a weekly basis is instead of reading logs where they just write down how many minutes they read each week, uh, we have what's called bookshelfies. And I actually got this idea from someone online. I can't remember her name. So the bookshelfies on my website and they can log in and they take a picture with their book. Here's an example. He took a selfie with his book and he wrote a little description about what he read that week. Every so often I have them print out their picture with their description so that we can have a little display case here of stuff that they've read. I, I feel like it's always a work in progress, uh, like Pez Dispensers here, uh, that will be appearing. I really am passionate about the opportunities that they have to choose their seats. Um, I love how clean it looks um, because of the fact that there aren't mess messy desks. 
So the flexible seating piece is something that I'm really proud of. And also the ways that they can feel free to express themselves through books that they read, through pictures that they take, through what they write about, and what they want to display for the class that they are proud of. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions about anything that I've talked about in my classroom, feel free to leave a comment below and I'd be happy to get back to you. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, that was the quick rundown and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it and I hope you have a great day too. Talk to you later. I almost forgot to talk about my dad corner here. I have three kids as of right now, Nolan and Delaney and Eva, and this is where I put their artwork from home that they bring and they always say daddy put this up in your classroom and when Delaney was two she actually came in and she was supposed to write on the whiteboard but she ended up drawing on the wall instead and I actually ended up loving it I actually wrote love Delaney here because it reminds me of her whenever I see it so this is that's not graffiti right there that's and at the end of every year when the painters come around and touch up I always have to put a note here and remind them not to paint over that because I don't want them to get rid of it. Here's a painting that my son Nolan did when he was in kindergarten. This is a painting I did when I was in college. Anybody guess what it is? Here's a hint. This is a sidewalk. And here's another painting I did. I love oil painting. I try to put up as much art as I can.